Hello Real World Spectators, my name is Rain and welcome to another video log of my life on the Sekai Realm. This is video log number 36 and quite some time has passed since the last events that occurred here on the realm and I'm feeling that it's now time for me to show you what I've been doing because you know I've been working hard in the background while I've been well my, my mind has been cluttered a bit because of what happened regarding this whole um, nameless and visitant incident right so um where, where am I going okay to the shopping district okay so we're here and like I said before um, my head has been going in a spiral with all the thoughts regarding Nameless and the Visitant and in the background I've been working on stuff like this right here while I get my thoughts together so we have this lawn here in front of the bookstore and I promise this little turtle here is not a part of the decoration but we have um, well manicured lawn to differentiate between the regular grass and I think it goes well with it I also added these walls here on the side so that you can tell that it's a part of the bookstore and you know it's part of you know the, the landscaping for the bookstore so yeah that's one of the things oh we also have these trees up here that have some grass growing on 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 top of it I think it makes it look a little bit more a little bit more detailed right and we do have an uh, some trees that don't have like that one over there so I just wanted to show you guys how I achieve this it's very simple I'm sure you've seen it before or you've probably come up with it yourself but it seems I don't have any grass blocks on me I wonder if there are any loose grass blocks around here you, you know what just for the sake of demonstrating I'll take oh okay I didn't expect that I'll take some of these right here and use it in order to um to show you guys how it's how I do it right um, and it's just basically to remove some of the leaves from up here like one leaf replace it with a grass block and then grab yourself some grass plant it up there and then you well bone meal ah, I okay guys I didn't come prepared for this I'll I'll have to go get bone meal after this let me just place in a bit more of these right here oh I thought I had everything I have the grass I have I have the, 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 I didn't even have the grass, you know what, I didn't come prepared, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's, let's just go ahead and find a skeleton quick. I'm sure that there are some that spawn up here and then they just jump into the water and then just stay down here for a while. We have a drown there. Oh, there, yep, exactly. Oh, we have two down here, but I'll just grab this one here. All right, did I, yes, I got three bones right here. Perfect, so we can get some bone meal and then I can show you guys how, we, how I do it. <laughs> Oh, we're starting with building tips, but I did not come prepared and we just have this guy right here swimming with his llamas for absolutely no reason All right, let's just bone meal these quickly here and Then we'll we'll come down from the tree and see it from below and see how it actually turned out Hopefully well, I mean that's all you had to do anyway All right Well because the tree is higher than the others you can't really see it that well But it does give it a little bit of fluffiness to it if if, if that's the right word to use at all so another thing that I decided to test out when it comes to making this place better is putting green concrete powder here on the edges of where the grass blocks end because I didn't really like seeing that and uh, Pillager Where are you going? Stop it. Anyway, so as I was saying um, Where the grass block blocks ended um, it, it has some brown on it and I do have some concrete powder on me So I can actually show you right so let's just go at this end over here where we have some um oh okay I need to check that out later all right so um let's see um yeah over here let's try over here hopefully it's not hollow at the bottom here so let's remove these because the, the brown parts of this is still dirt right so what I wanted oops so what I wanted was to remove the brown entirely and have it green and it and it's not the same exact color as the grass in fact each biome has different color grass so it would it would vary but it works well for plains type biomes and probably this beach biome here itself it's just a bit of um so that it can be a little bit seamless you know when it comes down because the brown is a bit too harsh coming off from the sand itself and i feel like the grass the greenness on the edges actually works well when blending into the sandy parts of this beach biome here I'll just quickly go ahead and fill in this with the grass blocks that I just got from demonstrating that to you guys. This was actually the first place I tested it on and I think it came out, it turned out quite nicely. Look how nice it looks and green. Uh, you can see it on the edges of Spawn Island. It's uh, Pillager, I knew you would be a pin in the butt. Alright, so let's go over there. As you can see, we have a big tree over there um, beside the guild hall. Um, I decided I wanted to 
make a little bit more of these custom trees here and um it works well with the guild hall let me just get rid of that guy there if i can no run away and I also incorporated some of these custom boulders here to look really nice with a little bit more detail. We have um, dead coral and a horse on it. Uh, the horse is not a part of the decoration either, guys. Oh, I, oh, this is my horse. I can ride it, I think. I, I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> but as I said before, we have dead coral here to add a little bit more detail. We, have, we actually have an emerald ore right there as well. And stone buttons to give it that much more detail to match with the giant tree there. You know guys, I, I've been working hard on trying to become better at landscaping and building in general. And I think I want to build another one of those trees over there as well. I think that would look nice. And see all over here where we have the green concrete powder for it to blend in. It looks really nice. Look at it. Tell me, tell me that doesn't look really nice. I really enjoy experimenting with different build styles and different things that I can do. But let's let's go ahead and check that island over there. I think I think it's Yuki who is building this. Yeah, he he's been work he's been working on something. I I'm not sure if it's a shop or something special here, but I did build this island here for him to start working on because we're working on a project called Spawn Archipelago, so we're going to be having a lot more islands around Spawn Island itself. But this this looks like it's some sort of fossil structure. So oh, let me let me quickly sleep here because it's already becoming dark. As the sun rises in bright orange over the horizon here on the Isekai realm, let's all go ahead and see some of the other things that I've been working on in the background after the events that occurred um, in the previous video log, right? So remember in this direction we actually have a creeper farm that we use to stock our rocket shop providing us with all of that good gunpowder. Here it is. This this is the creeper farm and right beside it we have this other monstrosity here which I think looks very interesting <laughs> and you just saw like a mob just fall in one of the tubes just now. But basically what this contraption is that I worked on and it took a lot of grinding for me to do is a gold farm and how does it make gold? Well allow me to explain that by heading up so I can actually show you Oop. like this so basically what it does is that it uses full-size portals to the nether wait what's what's this thing in front of me what oh <laughs> I was too close to the lever here and also it uses um, trident killers you can see a piece of a trident in there so basically these trident killers work much better than the ones than the one that I use for my skeleton farm right so I'm, I might have to upgrade from then on. but also these 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 things make a lot of noise guys <laughs> so let's go ahead and see a live demonstration of how this works basically we just have to clip click this lever here and then the portal should be coming on and off as fast as they possibly can just like that um, and each time it turns on and off granted that they are max sized portals they have a chance of spawning in a pigman and each of these pigmen will be pushed towards the center i'm um, using water streams and they will they will fall in one of these four tubes that we have here and also we can just turn this on here and because those are tridents that i threw myself ah and because of those are tridents that i threw myself i'll be able to collect all the experience that comes in from these little cracks here because that's the reason why we placed uh, staircases right there. Oh my goodness, this is so loud. All right, so yeah, we, we most of all, we can collect all the drops from these pigmen, which is rotten flesh and gold and such. And also we do have some fish here because, well, we built this thing beside the creeper farm over an ocean and water, the water streams up there actually end up spawning some of these fish and squid and dolphins even, and sometimes even pillagers. I, I you know what? Regardless, I'm getting a lot of gold and I'm going to the castle to show you just how much I have gathered so far. But before we go ahead and do that, I want to share with you guys an idea that I have for builds around this year. Because this castle has been around here for quite some time without any new things built or changes around here. And Rosketron has been working hard on his base recently. So I went ahead and removed a lot of trees from around this area. I, I did a bit of a clearing. And this is the center of the castle here. And what I intend to do is actually build a town here. So we have buildings on that side, buildings on that side. And on the center, we'll have like a waterway heading out towards the water, the ocean in that direction right there. And we'll have like Sakura and all kinds of villagers from different biomes inhabiting this area. And over here, you can see that actually filled in this area because it was lower. And I wanted it to be flush with the walls of the moat. Um, yeah, that, that's a lot of work that I actually did myself. <laughs> It goes all the way back here because all of this was lower than the moat walls. And um, 
I think it turned out quite nice. It blends in quite well. I'll, I'll have more to work on it with detailing afterward. But over this side, I never managed to, to finish. But it's just here to show you guys basically how it used to look before. See, the walls of the moat were actually higher than the actual land here that you see um, going in this direction. So yeah, I, I'll also work on that. And probably um, I'll be doing a bit of streaming in the near future. So look out for that. Find me on Twitch at um, twitch.tv slash rain otfh. Um, mm, I don't have any meat for you, Legoshi. Have a golden carrot. I've already upgraded to golden carrots because I have a gold farm. And so every time I pass Legoshi, I keep forgetting that I should get meat for him. But anyway, let me show you all the resources that I've gathered so far. So we have this double chest and this double chest filled with gold ingots and half of this double chest i also um got a lot of iron here so that we can use for future projects because iron is always hard to get and of course because i have a creeper farm we have all of that gunpowder to use um for rockets and if you've watched my previous streams you may have noticed this right here i have not addressed this before but this is basically elevators that i made bubble column elevators that I made in order to get down to my um, slime farm. I've been collecting a lot of slime recently. Um, I don't really need slime immediately, to be honest. But I'm collecting just in case when I need it for like terraforming projects. Um, so yeah, it still works. I have no problem with it. And I have quite an amount of it here in um, my storage system. As you can see, all of these are blocks right here. Stacks and stacks of blocks. And we don't have much honey blocks because we're not at mining outpost number two very often where we have the bee farm located, right? So before we move away from Shinkujo, which is the Crimson Castle that I call my base right here, I want to show you at the top here where I have a few renovations that I've done. I've actually gone ahead and made myself a proper personal space here. Um, <laughs> I, I guess some would call it like a room and right here we have a lot of detail because I put a lot of effort into making this something that I actually like and I'll I'll give you a quick little tour here we have a lectern here with a book for writing notes and then we have shelvings here with um, skeleton skulls storage just like that chest mine cart there and we have different things at the top here like anvils we have picture frames we have a clock as well to tell the time we have a television as you can see right here I mean which house would which personal space would be complete without a television we have all the armor sets here explodes armor set Igni's armor set um, these armor sets were previously in the mining outpost number two over there and I brought them over here finally and also we have all the music discs um, from C418 and we have some plants on the ledges we have some curtains on the sides as well um, we can see the sunset from here looking quite nice and also we um, let's see what else <laughs> we have this seating arrangement here which doubles as a bed as well so we can sit here and be, be comfortable um, while watching television um, we also have a trash bin over here and some more plants to bring a little liveliness inside of my personal space here and also we have a ladder leading up to what I would say is like the attic and this is a very important place because this is where I store all of my treasure and of course diamond is very important diamonds are like the most expensive thing we can have here it's also our currency here on the realm so yeah as you can see it's not hollow it's completely sturdy here so I will be storing all of my riches there I mean it is a castle after all so we have to have like a treasure and riches room and I don't really <laughs> I don't really have an entrance to this place so I just keep breaking in through the w through the window here but I do have somewhat of an exit over here maybe I can double it as an entrance as well um, I'll see how I build this if I do a an elevator or something but if we come down here we go to the floor below it where we have um, apparently we have a meeting between mobs Hello. <laughs> this is so. S Anyways, it 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 has more, uh, much more than I thought it had than than I saw the last time. I mean, but anyway, see extra decorations on the edges as well. Seriously, there were only like three mobs here the last time, and now we have an entire meeting with mobs. Look, this is a baby zombie riding a cow. <laughs> I thought I lit this place well enough so that mobs don't spawn anymore. We have witches, spiders, creepers, even a fox. Guys, this is a full-blown meeting among heretics. This is, <laughs> this is definitely, this was definitely not intended. You, you know what? I won't, I won't, I won't kill them. I'll leave them there. They're trapped there in those seating arrangements forever. <laughs>
One more thing I want to show you guys before I leave the castle is, well, you know that the base is, um, the story system is actually there and below that we have like floor level here and there's nothing underneath there that we have to use it for, right? I mean, I don't have anything to use it for. At least I thought I didn't. But then during the period of time that I was working a lot, I went ahead and actually did something grand. Guys, I've really been working so hard to distract myself that I went ahead and did this. Completely dug all the way down to bedrock level, this entire area. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was simply digging and digging. Ooh, did I lose a lot of life? I forgot to put my totem in my hand. Anyways, so as you can see here, the entire thing is dug all the way down to bedrock level. I have no idea what I'll use this for, but I actually put black glass down here as well as you can see. So that it can make it, I mean, it, mobs already can't spawn on bedrock. It's just to make it easier to walk around down here. But maybe I might use this for like a dungeon maze thingy that's underground. I mean, it is a castle after all, like I mentioned before. And what castle would be complete without a treasure room and also a dungeon? Alright, so let's go to the other location towards the sunset. Actually, no, it's not that way. It's this way. Um, what I've been doing also because we've had the opportunity to experience a few thunderstorms around here. I actually went ahead and made some more charged creepers because like like I told you guys before and if you've been following for a while you've noticed that I've built this um, building here in the experimentation research area with a creeper head because this was initially built to transport charged creepers to the nether but we never did got around to doing any of that so eventually we'll get that done good thing i already collected some charged creepers this area is coming together quite fine we have the wither killer over there we have the interrogation center for pillagers we have the zombie spawner we have the research area we also have the skeleton spawner over here and while i was lighting up some caves underground because um it's always safest to do that when you're um, living in this world, right? I, I had no idea, guys. I didn't know. Where, I think it's in this in this hole right here. I, I should have marked it out. So I was lighting up these caves and doing a bit of caving, getting some iron ore and coal and all of that stuff, right? And it was while I was doing that, I found this area here, which is a dungeon, which has a spider spawner guys like seriously i didn't even know i had a spot spider spawner directly below my research and development um area that i've dedicated to that um it's it's not very far from there to be honest like around the it's not far from the other buildings that are there so let me just come out from here if i can as quickly as possible all right see we, we're in the same area still it's not very far and i hope i wish i actually marked it out so that i can see where the spawner actually is Oh, actually, I think this is it right here. So this is where the sp spawner actually is. We can build a building around it and have it be a part of this research and experimentation and development area that I've been building for quite some time and developing on a lot more. So we have that to do as well, which is excellent. So I decided to put this beacon back inside of this weather slash biome changing machine here. I decided to put it back in in order to observe the effects of what it causes in Rasketran's area, right? So I wanted to research a bit more. Um, we'll go ahead and visit um, Nameless slash the Visitant later on. But first, I want to come here to this village because the first thing you will see is that many of the villagers have changed their professions. We have a lot of purple coats here. I wanted to have a lot of clerics so that I could trade all the rotten flesh that I get from my gold farm from all the pigmen. Well, except for this guy who is a green coat. He's... He doesn't want to work, he's a nitwit. You know, he's a lazy ass, that's what he is. But anyway, moving on, I can get an influx of emeralds from those clerics by trading the rotten flesh with them. We're out here by the raid den that I created and we've been using this um, for the uh, about two weeks ago in a stream. As you can see, we have speed 2 because of this beacon, we made it fully functional. And I'll show you a bit more about that um, in a bit. But first, I want to show you that with all the raids that we've been doing, we get a lot of drops that would be considered trash, like those iron tools, right? And some bows. So we use the bows as fuel to smelt all the iron tools to get these iron nuggets. And all of these iron nuggets that we collected in, in during the stream come up to a stack of iron ingots and nine. Wow, this is amazing, especially considering iron is hard to get in this world. Uh, I already, yeah, I think I already moved all the jobs that we actually got. 
But anyway, back down to the beacon, like I said before, um, it helps a lot that I made that gold farm because, you know, iron is hard to get and all the other resource blocks that you need to make a fully powered beacon are more expensive, very expensive. So gold was what I needed to power this beacon properly so that while we're doing... Um, uh, I want to go up there to show you that uh, um, a villager is... Well, you can see the villager from here. I wonder if I can make it up there with flying and not pillaring up. Okay, Aww. there it is. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so this villager is up here. And he technically makes this a village. So that's what triggers the so-called max raid then that I built at the top. And we have a beacon here to give, up, give us extra power. In this case, we're using speed so that we can reach each of the pillagers faster and kill them. Because we do have decent enchantments on our weapons and our and also on our um gear right on our armor and such so yeah this this is working out quite well i might build a little building over here to house all the smelter system thingy and all of that since we're already near lpt5's ravine base entrance why don't we go ahead and enter and go visit our little friend that we trapped our so-called friend that we trapped in one of the suppression chambers he has been very silent lately I have been visiting this place from time to time to ensure that he is still inside of his containment chamber, his suppression chamber here, and he is, and I also try my very best to be careful not to break the glass because he will escape after that, so I have some extra glass in that minecart chest right there, um, just in case that happens, because chances are, if I do break the glass, the effects of the suppression chamber will wear off, and he will turn into the blue guy, and then teleport out of there, escaping as fast as possible, I would say. I do have a couple theories on that I want to share later. Especially since, while I've been working, I've been, I've been thinking about it a lot. We have all of these armor stands here, I've noticed. Like, from the first time we discovered LPT-5's base, we saw all of that there. Which was basically a collection of the different types of armor you can get. But we have had this armor stand here with nothing on it for quite some time um it didn't have anything on it i always assumed it was lpt5's personal um armor just like how i have on right now you know i have these well enchanted things right here but sometimes i wonder if there was something else that was supposed to go there since lpt5 was a master of breaking the laws of the world so i wanted to go ahead and share with you guys some of my thoughts on the many phenomena that occurred during the period of time when our steve was free and this platform is one of them remember i thought that i wondered i thought i remember when i thought that pillagers were after me like the whole conspiracy was that the pillagers were trying to stop me from doing the things that i wanted to do well turns out it was all the doing of the visitant slash nameless slash our steve and he was the one that was behind everything from when we started the reviving steve project where rasketron was killed down there and you know all the things that happen around here can be traced back to him now that we actually have answers as to who was behind it this entire time so i have these books here that i've been that i've been rereading and trying to connect some dots this one is about the suppression chamber and i have a few theories about that we have this one here which um our steve actually tried to steal from this era before because it talks about the successful experiment that lpt5 had with the zombie steve revival project and the reason I see that he would come to steal this book is because, well, named in here is Z459A, which is our Steve, which is his name. This book is saying that he is LPT5 successful experiment. And the reason I feel that LPT5 made that book to transport entities into the suppression chambers, this book right here with the special functionality in doing so, is in case the experiment with reviving zombie Steve went amok, he could just... Hit him with the arrow and transport him into a suppression chamber where he won't cause any danger at all. And I think I'm I'm one of my theories is that the reason we don't have LPT5 around anymore is because this person that we have trapped in the suppression chambers actually went ahead and removed or trapped LPT5 somewhere in this world. We don't know. We have this book here that we got tricked into making part of the weather machine. It could be a trick it could be an incomplete book to build that machine back there that we built as as a part of i don't know why many of this these things are happening to be honest i'm still a bit confused because we don't know the motives at all about um our steve what why he's doing all of these things maybe i don't know if he's being spiteful i don't know what is his agenda we have other books here inside of here and this one is actually part five so we have some volumes that are actually missing here and maybe if we find these volumes of these books 
we can actually get some answers. I'm sure there are other um, books out there that are scattered about. In fact, our Steve could probably have some hidden somewhere in the world that we don't know. In fact, we don't know where he has been staying this entire time. He is very elusive. The only thing I know is that one time he came out of the nether portal around my first mining outpost. That's the only thing I know about him. And now that I'm saying it and thinking about it, when we tried our Reviving Zombie Steve project, it would have failed anyway because, well, there's absolutely no way two could exist in one world at a given time as it said in the instructions before that we were following. This entire time we didn't know that the successful project that LPT5 had reviving Zombie Steve, our Steve as we know now, was a success. So our experiment was doomed to fail from the start. And you know there's also the possibility that LPT5 still exists in this world or not. I mean, we, we, we don't have the information for that, right? We just have to find more or else there's no way we can know for sure. There's also the possibility that our Steve got rid of the person who created him. And that's the reason we don't have LPT5 around, which would make RST very dangerous. Also guys, I wanted to show you this right here. We have pillager captains here. And this one is special because we caught him a while back, a long while back actually. But he's a vindicator holding a banner and they don't come this way anymore. They don't spawn that way. I have a small theory that the illagers are actually not getting along with the pillagers recently or something. I'm not sure, but... My plate is full right now with lots of things that I need to do and things I need to think about. Um, so I'll think about that theory. I'll research that another time. Alright guys, that's it for this video log here. I'm so happy and excited to get back to building and doing some creative stuff. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, if you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. I always answer all of my comments. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.